Hey everybody, my name is Monsel. And I'm Mallory. And we're with Neutropedia. And today we're in San Francisco. Actually, we're in Mill Valley, which is in the San Francisco Bay Area. And this is Road Q&A number three. So without further ado, Mallory, what is the first question? The first question is, for someone new who hasn't ever used nootropics, what would be an effective starter pack? Good question. If you're new to nootropics, you probably are looking for focus and concentration. Now I get tons of feedback and usually people are looking for more focus, more concentration, and if that's the case, my suggestion is caffeine plus L-theanine. It's a very standard nootropic stack and it's, a, it's well researched actually. And you want a ratio of, of one to two caffeine to L-theanine. What that looks like in practice might be a, a cup of coffee and 200 milligrams of L-theanine. Now there's also a, a product that I've formulated. You don't have to go out and buy it, but the reason I have 80 milligrams of caffeine is so that it's slightly less than a cup of coffee and avoids that jittery nature. And the L-theanine helps to improve the focus and concentration while removing the uh, heart problems that come like increased heart rate, heart blood pressure, etc. If you're a beginner and you want to improve your memory, then I would suggest piracetam and choline. And for just the general cognitive effects, fish oil. So if you if you really want a starter pack that's going to help you with all aspects of cognition, uh, I would suggest some fish oil, piracetam, maybe a choline source, and the L-theanine and, and caffeine stack. Mm. So that's your best starter pack. So just touching on the fish oil a little bit, when you go to, when you go to the grocery store and you see fish oil, there's all different kinds. You see DHA, um, what are some other ones? W what should you look for in a fish oil? Great question. Omega-3s don't necessarily mean you're getting what you need. Uh, I would recommend you look only at the DHA and the EPA content. These are the two types of omega-3 fatty acids that are most necessary for optimizing brain health and cognitive performance. Cool. All right, second question. How do you improve a deteriorating memory? Well, a deteriorating memory can be caused by many different things. However, most people these days don't get enough choline and the cholinergic system is one of the most important systems for memory formation and if you're not eating enough eggs or you're not eating kidneys and livers often which most of us don't do then you're probably not getting a lot of choline and Increasing the, t the, the choline could be something like alpha GPC or CDP choline. It could also be through uh, other drugs like uridine monophosphate or centrophenoxine even. And so many of these drugs will help primarily with memory. But I do want to stress that memory loss can come from many, many different things. Uh, there's tons of evidence to suggest that Alzheimer's disease could actually be uh, type 3 diabetes, so related to blood glucose and insulin uh, sen sensitivity and things like that. So the, the, the things that I've mentioned are only going to work if your memory or deteriorating memory is related to the cholinergic system. Mm. Cool. Third question, is paracetam enhanced when stacked with centrophenoxine? The answer is yes, for most people. Now, when you start off taking a nootropic, uh, most suggestions are paracetam plus a choline source. However, the more, uh, I guess one might say sophisticated, uh, new age opportunity is centrophenoxine, which is a uh, less well studied cholinergic, but there are lots of anecdotes that suggest it might be effective. And although the scientific literature is not there yet, it does seem to have a f positive effect. And it, theoretically, it definitely has positive synergy. Hmm, cool. Fourth question 
What is one easily accessible food that can contribute most to mental performance? I would have to say fish. Now fish is a great source of protein. It doesn't have many of the downsides that uh, a, a pure red meat diet might have. And more importantly, fish is often filled with omega-3 fatty acids, specifically DHA and EPA. Mm -hmm. So there's an evolutionary perspective that suggests for millions of years our ancestors lived close to the streams and fresh water for drinking water and because of that they ate a lot of seafood and they had a lot of DHA in their diet. Now I don't know the validity of that necessarily because I wasn't there back then but I do know that DHA and EPA are incredibly important today and if you can knock out two birds with one stone by eating some type of fish and also getting your fatty acids, the DHA and EPA, then you're off to a good start. Now, for somebody who's on a budget, don't run out and buy a ton of cans of tuna because tuna oftentimes uh, is filled with heavy metals like mercury and you might not want to eat it more than once a week but alternatives like sardines and mackerel are much smaller fish and they often have far less problems with mercury so you can eat them more often and they are the whole fish so usually there's plenty of different organs and a whole variety of uh, other nutrients that come with these these types of fish and you can get them in a can and it's relatively cheap cool awesome well that is it for road q a number three if you guys like this please go ahead comment below like the post let us know so we can keep doing these because i've got over 500 questions and i want to make sure they're answered for you anyway guys i'll see you next time take care